Welcome back, Michael here. Ubuntu 23.04 Luna Lobster is the latest Ubuntu STS release. As usual with STS version, a technical innovation leap is made. What exactly is in the package of Ubuntu 23.04 is what this video is about now. Have fun! Ubuntu 23.04 is not an LTS version with long-term maintenance, but the second interim version between the current latest LTS version Ubuntu 22.04 and the next LTS version Ubuntu 24.04. So if you are keen on the next LTS version of Ubuntu, you will have to be patient for another year. Sorry. Nevertheless, we are now looking at the second interim version. This means that there has been another technological leap in the Ubuntu Cosmos. What's new? Linux kernel 6.2, GNOME Shell 44 debuts on Ubuntu, the new Rust installer finally debuts on Ubuntu 23.04, there is a minimal ISO image possible, more snap and less flatpak. In this section, we are take a closer look at the specs of Ubuntu 23.04. Let's start with the minimum requirements. Calculate with these key points. 2 GHz dual core CPU or newer, 4 GB of memory or more, 25 GB disk space or more, DVD or USB slot for the installation medium, and an internet access is helpful. Ubuntu 23.04 is an interim version that comes with static version but is only provided with updates for a total of 9 months. The architecture supported is classical 64-bit. The Ubuntu server supports 64-bit architecture as well as ARM, IBM Power, IBM Z and Linux 1. Ubuntu supports the Debian package and its own Snap container format. So, now if you want to get started, first we have to download the Ubuntu ISO image. To do this, navigate to the Ubuntu project website and then select download at the top bar, then Ubuntu desktop. Now scroll down and then you will find Ubuntu 23.04. And now, <laughs> please don't get twisted, Ubuntu 23.04 is currently not yet released. Therefore, here Ubuntu 22.10 is still the current STS version. But nevertheless, if Ubuntu 23.04 is available, just click here on download and then the download starts in a few seconds. As soon as the ISO file has been downloaded completely, you should verify the checksum. I've already shown how to do this. Just have a look if there are any uncertainties. The installation took place in VirtualBox. I will not describe the installation process in detail here. Instead, here is a small overview of the installation. The steps are still almost the same. The installer walks you through cleanly. I plan to release a separate video about it. Let's come to the hacks and important commands. Refresh package sources with apt sudo apt update. Update packages sudo apt upgrade. Remove unnecessary packages after updating sudo apt auto remove. Refresh snap packages sudo snap refresh. The fully automated update chain would look like this sudo apt update and and sudo apt upgrade minus y and and sudo apt auto remove minus y and and sudo snap refresh. You could put this chain into a script and execute it via cron job, but you don't necessarily have to work with the terminal. Ubuntu also provides a graphical update tool. I recommend you to use this instead. Just go to the menu here and then Software Updater. You can either open this or do nothing actively, but remain reactive until the update manager reports to you and indicates updates. <laughs> there is an error occurred. I will not send it now. It is up to you which technology you prefer to use. As you can see, the software on this computer is up to date. Let's click here to settings. There is a recommendation from my side. I personally change all my Ubuntu systems like I show you now. Automatically checks for updates daily. When there are security updates, I will display immediately. I will not let them update instantly. 
And the same procedure here with all other updates, I will have them displayed immediately. And then that's fine for my end, close. And okay. Let's talk about the target group. The target group of Ubuntu is crystal clear. The Linux desktop and the Linux server. The desktop is available free of charge and is also oriented towards the needs of desktop users. This is evident in the clean and modern design of the Ubuntu desktop. The server is also available free of charge and can also be operated free of charge, but for business customers there is also a paid support and many other business areas where the server is only a delivering platform. However, the interim versions are aimed at progressive users and developers who have a need for new interfaces and apps. This means that those who want maximum stability should continue to use the LTS version. There may still be minor errors here with the STS version, which you may know how to deal with and remedy yourself. I would never recommend using a server with the interim versions. Immediately after installation, Ubuntu 23.04 took 8.5 GB from the disk. The initial benchmark value in memory consumption was around 1 GB. The number of installed packages after the first start 1727 Debian packages and 9 snap containers. At the time of creating this video, Ubuntu 23.04 is shipping GNOME Shell 44.0. This means you can also make full use of all features that GNOME 44 offers. On top of that, Ubuntu refines the Ubuntu desktop according to its own ideas. I like the design as well as the concept behind it. The visual breaking points are missing in this GNOME version, if you ask me. That's not bad. GNOME has developed very well since GNOME 40 version, considering the bumpy start with GNOME 40 back then. The Ubuntu desktop is still visually based on the former Unity desktop. There is a bar on the left, as you can see. You can customize this extensively. Let me show you how. Click on the menu and then on Settings. And then here to Ubuntu desktop. Here you can switch off the panel mode. This means the panel will switch to a dock. You have also the possibility to change the position on screen. Now it is left. Let's put it on the right side. Or what about at the bottom? Not to worry. It's all possible. If you have in the past used Windows, then what about position on the bottom and then switch back to panel mode. Maybe you like it like this. I will now switch it back to the original state on the left side. Furthermore, you can set color accents, which other distros with GNOME 44 still cannot offer with onboard means. Let me show you what this means for you. Go to Appearance, and then we will make this window a little bit smaller. And also open the file browser. And then we will change the color. Or what about green? Or blue? Let's change to dark or purple. Red. It looks awesome if you ask me. I will now go back to default, that means light mode and orange. <laughs> yeah, as you can see it's still not the final version. Okay, it crashed. <laughs> I will not send it now. And I will try it again. Switch color to orange and now it's working as expected. Okay. The option to set color accents will probably be added to GNOME at a later date. It is currently an exclusive feature of the Ubuntu desktop. And there is one more thing I want to show you. I really like the set of wallpapers provided. The quality of the images has been at a consistently high level on Ubuntu for quite some time. I like that. Now let's check the pre-installed software. We have Linux kernel 6.2 as browser, Firefox as email client Thunderbird, Office package is LibreOffice and software container is Snap. Let's check the generally pre-installed software. What is useful on the desktop is included in a normal installation. The useless chunk of the past is fortunately a relict of the past. 
the set of included software is clear. In my opinion, you could forget about the games, but hey, you know that I can't leave that uncommended. If you need more software, you can find it in the App Store, which is called Ubuntu Software. There you will find many well-known apps, including apps like Slack, OBS Studio, PowerShell or Audacity. For those who value it, with Ubuntu there are Debian packages and Snap container packages in use. But now, what kind of package I may install? For example, let's use Keypass XC. If you click on the app, then here on the right, on the top, you can click on this button. There is a drop down menu, and then you see Snap, and here you see the Debian package. Not all apps are provided a Debian package. There is also a good example for this. Let's take Skype, and here you see there is only a Snap package available. Ubuntu 2304 represents a solid interim release that brings predictable software leaps. It comes with a fresh mainline 6.2 kernel and GNOME 44. The flavors come with the following desktops. The Debian package to Snap package transformation has received a new candidate. The Telegram client is now provided as a Snap package. We will not get into the discussion pro or con Snap, but if you like an Ubuntu system without Snap, there is also a way to do this. If you have interest in it, just write it in the comments and I will pick this up in a follow-up video. Now let's come to the conclusion and closing notes. We are experiencing a rounded further development of the Ubuntu Desktop Edition. At first glance, it does not look very spectacular. But under the bonus, there are quite fresh packages as already mentioned. That is the intention of the STS or Interims versions. New software and packages in an operational state as Canonical says. The performance of the system was very good. No jerks, no seconds to think and the like. Instead. A quick system behavior, very performant even in a virtual machine. Let's get back to the old question. Switch from Ubuntu 2204 or not? Only you can answer this question according to the following key points. If you want maximum stability of the system, then stay with Ubuntu 2204 LTS. If you want maximum new packages in the Ubuntu Cosmos, then switch to Ubuntu 2304. If you leave the LTS branch, then you must take a new or subsequent STS version with you every 6 months at the latest every 9 months. A return to the LTS version is only possible in the short term by reinstalling. The other way back to LTS would be to stay on the STS versions until Ubuntu 2404 is released and then after the upgrade to Ubuntu 2404, you can switch back to LTS in the software manager. But I will show that in more detail in a year's time in the Ubuntu 2404 test. For the moment, it remains to be said that Ubuntu 2304 is a solid interim version with new software. But now it's your turn. What are your impressions of Ubuntu 2304? Will you switch to it or will you stay at Ubuntu 2204? Feel free to write your opinion in the comments. I thank you for the kind attention and many thanks goes out to all supporters. Take care until the next video. Good day ladies and gentlemen.